Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Ymaxit 10.1 inch portable IPS screen. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So this is an HDMI monitor, but you can also connect a Raspberry Pi to it. So we had foam on here, and here's the back of the display. So we have some different inputs here. We have HDMI. This is a touch panel, so we have touch capabilities. We have power, earphone. We have touch here also, HDMI. I'm not sure what that one is. And we have brightness volume here. So this board can be used for different projects. You could use this in a mini arcade, multimedia projects. There are many applications for this. Let me finish pulling this out. We pull the foam out. We have a support card here. Here is a microfiber cloth for cleaning it. Pull the cardboard out, and here we have some cables. Here's a sort of flat HDMI cable. Here we have a micro USB to USB cable. And these are a bunch of connectors. So you can mount certain Raspberry Pi models directly to the back of this, and they have special connectors. So these are for the Raspberry Pi 4B. We have the HDMI connector here. So we have the mini HDMI to HDMI, and we have the micro USB to USB. So that allows you to mount it to the back of the display without having a bunch of extra cables sticking out. And then for the Raspberry Pi 3B, we have HDMI to HDMI and then micro USB to USB. So this comes with some little speakers here. These have self-adhesive pads on the back. So we can peel these off, then we can stick them on here and plug them in these connectors. And in this last bag, we have some hardware screwdriver. So I'll pull that out. So these are some little feet. So if you don't have an enclosure, you can use these to mount it. Some little rubber pads here, a little screwdriver. And here we have different mounting screws and standoffs. So, so I'll get these long screws here and we'll use these to mount the stand. So these have a protective film on them. I'm going to leave that on for now. There's also a little tape on this standoff here. I'll pull that off. So I'll position this foot like so, and I'll put the screw through. Actually, I'll put the screw through first. See it's sticking out of the bottom there, and I'll screw it into this little standoff. Of course, there are many options for mounting this. This is an included one, so if you're experimenting, you can use this, and then later you could 3D print something or build something out of wood or some other material. Okay, now I can lift this up. Now there is a protective film on this screen. I'll pull that off. Okay, so there's the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect up to this little NES Classic. So this has HDMI output on it. This can take an HDMI input. So I'll connect up all the cords here. I'll plug in the HDMI here. I'll plug that into the HDMI of the monitor and we'll turn it on. Okay, we can see the monitor powered on. It says no signal. Turn on the video game. And there we have a signal. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to connect up the speakers real quick. So let me get down a little lower so you can see this a little more head on. There we go. So this is a touch panel, but obviously this game is not touch compatible. But I wanted to do a quick demonstration of being able to hook a device into this. So this could be anything that takes HDMI, Xbox, PlayStation, computer, Fire TV stick, you name it. So on the left here, I have a volume control. So I can press that up or down to change the volume. I can press it in to change the backlight. So here's that control up close. It kind of toggles up and down and then you can press it in to switch back and forth. So you power this with USB, so you can use any USB charger. It's currently running at 0.36 amps. Let's change this here. Let's turn the backlight all the way up and I'll turn the volume all the way up. So now we're at 0.63 amps. So as you can see, this is a very efficient panel to run. So you could easily run this from a battery or a portable power station. So now I'll mount a Raspberry Pi on the back. So here I have a Raspberry Pi 4B, four gigabyte model. So we have mounting holes here. So that's not going to fit flush against there. So that's why they include these standoffs. I'll need to pull the tape off these standoffs. Okay, I have the standoffs installed. It's pretty easy to tell how to orient the Raspberry Pi because you want the USB near this USB port here. So I'll line up the standoffs with the holes in the Raspberry Pi and I'll use these little screws to mount it. Okay, I have the Raspberry Pi mounted here. Now to hook up the display, we'll take the adapter here. We'll plug it into the HDMI on the display and the HDMI on the Raspberry Pi. I'll just slide those together. Now they're joined. We'll go on the end here, and under here is the USB for the touch display. We'll connect this up the same way. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm just making sure I have these both 
lined up. I'm going to loosen the board just a little bit. There's a little bit of slop in here and having them loose will make it easier to align those ports. There we go. I'll tighten these screws back down. Okay, so I just wrote a Raspberry Pi image to an SD card. I'm going to take it out and put it back into my computer so it shows up on my desktop. I'll open up this boot partition, and I'm on a Mac, but you can do something similar on a PC. And I'll go to the config.txt. I'll scroll to the bottom. Now the Amazon description has these parameters you can enter in here. I'll just copy these and paste them in. And this is to set up the display. So if some of these aren't needed on a Raspberry Pi 4, I forget exactly which ones, but there's no harm in just leaving them here. I think like Mac's USB current is not useful and config HDMI boost are just ignored by the Raspberry Pi 4. So on the Raspberry Pi 4, you also need to go up here to DT overlay equals VC4 dash KMS dash V3D, and we'll put a number sign in front of this to comment it out or disable it. So I'll save this and close it. It says here the file is locked. I'm not sure why. Let me figure that out. It does not seem like it's going to work. Okay, I'm going to go in through my terminal and I'll try this using nano. So I'll type nano space forward slash volumes forward slash boot forward slash config.txt. We'll see if this works. Okay, so that worked there. So on Windows, you could use like Notepad++ Editor. I'll go up here, enter the number sign in. I'll say Control O to save, Control X to exit. So I think I was able to do it there. There we go. So I'm not sure why I wasn't able to edit that here. You could also put this in another Raspberry Pi or some other system to edit this, get rid of this second file. But for some reason, the permissions were not allowing me. So I've added these parameters. I disabled the one parameter. Now I should be able to boot it on the MyMaxit display. Okay, I have the display here. I'll set it flat. I'll insert the micro SD card. It's a little tricky here because it is upside down. There's not a lot of clearance. It kind of centers on this connector. I'll press it in. Now I found this can be a little tricky to remove these cards. Usually what I'll do, I'll take a pair of tweezers, stick it in there and pull that out. You could also loosen up this and remove it from the display. Now I'll plug in the USB type C to power the Raspberry Pi. So this will power the display using USB from the Raspberry Pi 4. If you have a Raspberry Pi 3, you probably want to plug power into the display also. And here I'll also plug in a USB dongle for a keyboard. So I'll tilt this up now. I'll press power on the Power supply for the Raspberry Pi. Here it's booting. Okay, it's resizing the file system. So this is a standard thing that happens when you put in a new system. Okay, so now we're booted to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Now I see a slight flicker on my camera screen, but I'm not seeing that in person. So this is a touch display. So I can touch that and I can go to something here. Let's just open up the web. Okay, and I already configured this for Wi-Fi in the Raspberry Pi imager. You can do that now. So it's pretty much ready to go. Let's um, we'll open up a website. Okay, I'm not getting any audio right now. Okay, so if I come up here to the microphone, if I right click on that, I can change that from AV jack to HDMI. There we go. So here we have it full screen and we have audio. So I found that touchscreen to be very responsive and I didn't do any extra configuration just to make this work. So it's very handy. So from what I understand, the touchscreen also works on Windows. So if you hook this up to a Windows computer, you could use the touchscreen there. I don't think it works on Mac and I don't know how well it will work on other builds of Raspberry Pi, but you could certainly always test those out. So that's the Ymaxit 10.1 inch HDMI screen with Raspberry Pi support. I think this is a pretty slick way to add a screen to a Raspberry Pi or just have a portable screen in general. I like that this is powered with USB, so you could power this from a small power brick or a portable power station or just any USB port in general. So this would be great for portable applications or low powered applications. This would be easy to put into a car since you could power it with USB. It's easy to get USB power from a car. So you could build a media system in a car. You could build a little gaming system, arcades. This would also work well for 3D printing monitoring. So you could put Octopi on here or not with Octoprint and you could monitor your printing. You could control your printing on here. You could also put something like Home Assistant on here. You could put surveillance software. There are many options for this. The screen here looks really good and it also has a touch interface. So if you're doing something like monitoring a 3D printer, you don't have to have a big keyboard and mouse sitting out in front of it. Now you can get an online keyboard. There are different options you could download within the Raspberry Pi system. And then you could have your keyboard up here if you want to type in on the screen also. So if you make some sort of kiosk with this. Another option would be to 
put Kiwix on here and you could have an offline Wikipedia kiosk. That'd be a neat option. So the sky's the limits on what you can do with this. I just wanted to demonstrate this as an HDMI monitor, but also show getting a Raspberry Pi set up on this. The main thing to remember is that you remove that one line from the config that I showed to get it working with Raspberry Pi 4. I think it'll work right out of the box with Raspberry Pi 3 though. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.